Well, here we are, the 11th of January, and it's about, it's 60 degrees out, so just enough for me to be able to get some color on this thing. As you can see, I've got it all masked off. So I'm going to go and I've got a couple shaker cans. I'm going to shake those up and start putting some color on this. Okay, we got our first light coat on. And it says you can re-coat uh, after one hour or 24 hours. So I'm going to run back into town. And, well, here's coat number two. Starting to finally get some color. Am I letting the bat the cat out of the bag here on what we're going where it's going? Anyway, I do let this dry or come out later this afternoon or tonight. We'll get the final coat on, and then we'll let it dry real good and start working on. The, I gotta media blast that cross member and clean those up and get that back in then I can start putting the the uh, steering axle assembly back together and get it in there I don't think I I think I'm just going to clean that up I'm not going to take those apart I don't want to tear the uh, cups up on those any worse than they already may be I mean it well, it did. Steer's pretty good. So, anyway. Okay, folks, there it is in all its glory. Got some color on it. We're going to go back to the original color. I think it turned out really, really good. I'm really happy with it. As long as it stays on. Anyway, there we go. So we're start putting it back together and got a lot, a lot of work to do yet. And it's kind of a tad bit cold right now since uh, I don't have any heat in this building. But uh, it'll be a little slow on the updates until I get a chance, until it warms up a bit. Hey everybody out there and internet land um, I think the last time I posted a video was back in February of 2022 and uh, well a whole bunch has happened since then me uh, not really <laughs> here's the uh, forklift it's where it was left at last time I posted Still got the uh, 304 International that I need to get done so I can get back to the Scout. I got the uh, uh, the project for, uh, and I'm drawing a blank, for the uh, uh, Oh, I'll think of it later. But anyway, I still got that. And what happened was, is, uh, it got to be too cold to do any more painting out here. So, uh, and then the other thing that happened was, is I started doing a project inside the, uh, at the house, redoing a uh, laundry room that was supposed to be a month, and here it is, Father's Day. And uh, it's still not done, but uh, I need to get back out here. So I thought I got a couple things I need to do. Um, I uh, um, I bought a uh, English wheel, Harbor Freight English wheel, uh, a couple a uh, couple years ago. I'm gonna go ahead and put that together. Brad's moving his uh, international pickup out of the way here. We'll give him a minute.
got a sound. I love the sound of a 392. Anyway. I bought an English wheel and I've never gotten around to putting it together. The other thing I bought recently is this prime weld TIG welder, TIG MIG and stick. Or no, this is just TIG and stick, I believe. So uh, what I'm gonna do is come down here and naturally I got the old uh, English well sitting there in the uh, yeah, it's still in the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull, drag that down here and assemble it this morning. Part of the reason I'm not just jumping right back into that is, of course, we went from it being too cold to now we got 90 plus 90 to 100 degree weather. Here we are finally back working on the uh, 1959. Clark Clipper forklift and what you see here is the rear steering axle it pivots here and back here on these things you can see I need to clean these up uh, I've got an issue with these that there's a grommet that goes in there and it normally comes out here and looks like that. As far as I can tell, these grommets in here are unobtainable. So what I'm going to do is, let me see here, I bought this piece of uh, rubber off of Amazon. And I cut and place, cut, take these off and cut and place the uh, you know replace that there and anyway what I've done so far is I've taken the tie rods off and uh, the boots look like that and I believe one was missing I've got three total so unless one slid under here where I can't see it I was missing one so I went to O'Reilly's and I had a choice of either just a regular black one, these are universal. Regular black ones are these neoprene ones, I believe they are. Yeah. And I ended up going with these. They were a dollar fifty more package. There's two in a package. They had to order me one. They only usually stock one package. Here it is. Probably your thing. Anyway, I ended up going with these because the black ones were a little bit taller. You can see these are taller than the original ones, but they should scrunch down and hold some grease in there. So we'll put those on there. Uh, I'm This axle assembly, um, I power washed it. I mean, it was so caked with grease. I power washed it twice. I... Uh, um, then I let it sit in the, sit, soak in the parts washer for a week. And then I went out and sprayed it off. And then I used some of the purple degreaser stuff, sprayed that on there a couple times and sprayed it off. So I finally got it. So it's, except for this down here that, uh, oozed out of the, out of these when I was taking them apart. Uh, I got all the grease off of it, so I'm just I'm not gonna take this completely apart. I'm just going to um, put some uh, rust stop on it. Then I'll go ahead and paint it. Uh, I did go and pick up a uh, grease injection needle, so our you can see there's a there's a there's some of the uh, parts washing 
degreaser in there or uh, inject some grease back in there and get that out of there and then when I put the uh, uh, the boots on there or go ahead and inject some in grease some grease there and then I'll replace the uh, the grease fittings that are on the on the knuckles um, here and here and I believe there's one yeah there's one right there on that so I'll go ahead and do that get that all greased up and and painted and uh, then we're then the other thing I'm doing right now is I media but there's a cross member in the middle of the forklift that uh, that one of those uh, anchor pins goes in right there so I media blast that I've got it primered I'm waiting for the primer to dry here and then I paint that black and then of course that will go back in here uh, the the cross member goes from there to there there's a pin that goes in there and there's a, a, a pin that will go in that cross member then we can get that axle back on and uh, I'll probably go ahead and get the wheels pressed off and get those painted and then either put the wheels back on or replace them and uh, so I'll get that up and then the next part will be getting to that engine getting that cleaned up and resealed and uh, painted and put that in and then we got all the other pieces we got a e either media blast or strip and uh, um, finish up okay before and after picture this is before uh, we clean it up Here's one before, this is after. Doesn't have to be perfect, I don't believe. Basically, um, what I did is I took some quadruple steel wool, um, some memory paper, cleaned it up, and when I got all done with it, I took some 600 grit to smooth it out as much as I could. And uh, so when I get done with this, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of WD-40 to keep it from flash rusting. And uh, interesting thing about these, let me see if I can find it, find them. Yeah, well, I got to find those and clean them, clean them up at the caps that go over this and this there's no zerks on that so oops <laughs> there's no zerks on it either the cap or the cradle itself so I don't know if I have to look through and find out I don't know if occasionally you had to take these off and grease them or it just didn't need much grease but anyway that's where we're at there so we've got the paint on it. I've got the new um, grease covers on it. These are polyurethane. Uh, I did uh, end up replacing um, the castle nuts on here rather than plating them. We didn't get to that point. Um, I went through and cleaned these up as best I could. I didn't really want to remove too much metal off of it interesting thing on these is this whole assembly pivots on these two but there's no grease zerk in there so I guess I'll slather it with grease before before I put them back on the next uh, step oh and then I did tighten this up a little bit this castle nut up a little bit still turns um, I do have to, uh, the um, service manual shows these tie rod ends with grease zerks in them, but these do not have grease zerks in them. So I'm going to have to squirt some grease in on those. But in the meantime, uh, my next project is to go ahead and replace these. I don't want to have any of the uh, these grease zerks here 
plugged up. So I replace, I guess there's three of them. I replace those and then we'll grease everything up. Then I have to make those O-ring gasket type cushions for this. Put it together, put it back on. We have the steering gear, axle, whatever, rebuilt. Um, I went ahead and used the needle and grease these joints here. You can see it replaced the Zerks here, 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 there, and there. So now, my next job is come over here. We've got these pins that that swivels on. And in an earlier video, I was showing how it had a this right here actually came out and was crushed in here and that was all shot so what I did is I got a sheet of uh, rubber from Amazon used a hole drill to drill out the outer diameter then I tried a spade bit on here got most of it out had to finish cutting that out with the uh, little hacksaw, you know, air hacksaw, air saw there. Then, we have to shove this on over and shove it down there. And, this is what we end up with. It's not perfect, but it's going to do. So, I'll finish that one up. And then I've got to put that cross member across there and attach it, attach that, oh, the other one of those to it. And then we can put the rear steering axle back in. I've got the uh, cross member bolted back in. There's four bolts, top and side. Anyway, so now we're ready to put the uh, pin in there. And then we can put the axle back in. Here's a tip for you. I marked where the hole is there makes easy, makes it easier lining the castle nut up so that you can uh, slide the uh, cotter pin in. With the help of an uh, inch drive uh, pry bar and socket and a cheater bar and the uh, impact wrench we got her back in so the next step is to uh, slide that uh, um, axle steering assembly back in there and get that attached I've got the uh, ax steering assembly axle positioned here and the one thing, and then here's the caps that go on it. I went ahead and greased both the uh, axle assembly pivot point and then these caps. So these caps go on here like so. And then they bolt up. Actually, I believe it goes like that. Yep. And then they bolt up from the bottom. So, I've got my new bolts here with lock washers. So, my next step is to go ahead and uh, start bolting that up. 